Hello everyone, in this video I would like to show you how to generate confidence intervals around the mean difference in a with, within group um, design. So I will do this by using ASCII or also known as exploratory software for confidence interval. This is a free software that you can download um, and uh, you just need to download a zip file um, you can download it at the newstatistics.com. Uh, and uh, once you open up uh, ASCII chapters 5 to 6, click on Data Paired, and uh, you'll be able to access this um, software here to generate a confidence interval. Now, let's start from the beginning. So let's clear all the data. I'm going to untip these as well. Now the first thing I guess is to uh, put the name of your dependent variable so suppose you're using a digit span task so digit span right here and uh, suppose you've collected some uh, data which I've conveniently prepared here for um, 10 participants at uh, baseline and a post test so you can just copy and paste it in here as you can see the software has um, generated all the calculations for us here and here and as well as the graphs with the data points and the confidence intervals. Now as you can see here participants um, at pretest scored a mean of 3.4 and a post test a mean of 5.8. And the mean difference between these two is 2.4, which is displayed right here. And as you can see, the mean difference sits right about 2.4. Now, what we're really interested in is the confidence interval on the mean difference between pre and post. Now, um, the theory behind why we're interested on the confidence interval on the mean difference and why this is, in a sense, more interesting than the confidence interval be, uh, around the mean for pretest and post-test. I will explain that in another video, but for, for the purpose of this video, I will just um, show you a little bit how to use this software. Now, the width of the confidence intervals is uh, sensitive to the correlation between uh, pretest and post-test. In fact, the stronger the correlation, um, the shorter the CIs. I can just quickly show you what happens when you uh, the correlation becomes uh, less strong. So if I just um, modify the data a little bit now, as you can see, the correlation has become less, uh, a little bit weaker, and the confidence interval, the length, has become longer. So if I just undo this, we go back to a stronger correlation. Again, it's um, the um, CIs have become shorter. But as I said, the theory behind why this is the case, uh, I will talk about it in another video. Something else that you can include in this graph is the uh, data pairs. And you just need to click on here. And what this shows you really is just um, that participants who scored a um, 5, 4, 3, and 2 correlate with um, the post-test data at um, 8, 6, and 5, I believe. Um, maybe some journals uh, will uh, accept this, uh, so you can include it if you want to. Um, if you would like to include it in your lab report, um, do so if your tutor or uh, professor is happy for you to include them. Um, I like to include them and I like to see them because they just convey um, that extra bit of information. Um, but now let me show you um, a little bit uh, some of these functions and then we copy and paste that into a Word document. So as you can see the uh, two-tailed um, test is um, significant so the uh, the difference between baseline and post test is statistically significant with a mean difference of 2.4 you obviously will need to report all this information if you can in your lab report and hopefully in your publication as well now let's um, copy and paste this into a word document and modify it to um, fit the APA uh, rules. 
Now, actually, what I like to do when I um, uh, copy and paste a graph into Word is to insert it into a uh, table. And I will show you why that's the case. So I just insert it in, insert it in there. Well, the reason is because when I um, type in the caption for the graph, for example, figure one, dot, 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 and I move the um, graph, the caption moves with the graph. And so that just really makes it easier. And I can just really copy and paste um, this again into a, another page of the document and the caption moves with the figure. So that just makes life a little bit easier. So to um, format it in APA style, there are a couple of things you need to be doing. So the first thing is to keep the sort of table or box around this graph whilst removing the line. So you need to highlight the whole box or table and go into table design, borders and no borders. And as you can see, the um, uh, figure now is still inside a box uh, which was here but not the lines are not there. The second thing is to remove the uh, border around the actual graph so you may want to click on the on the lines and then right click go down to format chart area and uh, click on border and no line and now this has been uh, removed and again I can show you that if you move the graph, the caption moves together with the graph. The second thing is to perhaps um, modify the title here. It doesn't seem to allow me to change what's uh, written inside here. So what you can do is just uh, delete it and then click on the graph and under chart design click on add chart element and go into access title and primary vertical. Now what you can do then is to right um, digit span the name of your dependent variable. The um, <clears throat> other thing to do is to perhaps move, uh, remove these ticks here if you want to. So you just click on this axis here and uh, you can right click it for example and click on format axis and that opens up here and you go all the way down to tick marks and then just remove them with major type none, minor type none. And as you can see now, these have been removed. You want, may want to do this uh, as well if uh, you're required, uh, but otherwise this seems like a pretty um, nice, neat graph. And um, that's it. Thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this.